Hello everybody and welcome back to Game Domain. This video is the first installment of our new series, Top Sellers. In Top Sellers, we are going to talk about the top selling games on various different consoles that people have fallen in love with over the years. In today's video, we will be talking about a console that many people still play and is also a nostalgic one for us here at Game Domain, the Nintendo GameCube. The GameCube was released in Japan and North America in 2001, and to date has found its way into around 22 million homes. This little cube is adored by longtime Nintendo fans, as a huge amount of them can call the GameCube their first video game console. And with a love of a system comes a love for the games on it, and now we're going to talk about those games, the top sellers on the Nintendo GameCube. The fifth best-selling GameCube game of all time is Luigi's Mansion the first console Luigi game ever to be released. This fan favorite is the second Mario title to have Luigi as the main character, and boy did fans love it. Luigi's Mansion is a single player adventure that takes you around a haunted mansion with just a flashlight as you solve different puzzles and are introduced to the primary villain's Boo. And there are a lot of Boo. Basically the whole game is filled with Boo. As you travel around, your goal is to defeat as many of the ghosts as you can and reach King Boo, who is holding Mario in a painting. Upon King Boo's defeat, you bring the painting of Mario back to Professor E. Gad, and your journey is complete. Luigi's Mansion was a very fun and addictive game for both young and old fans, and still remains at the top of a lot of Nintendo fans' favorite games. Although the game is not rated that highly by some of the big video game raters, it still has a big spot in many fans' hearts, and also found its way to becoming one of the top-selling GameCube games of all time. The fourth best GameCube seller is also the highest-selling Legend of Zelda game for the GameCube. The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker. This game has set a vast and expansive area, giving players a whole new taste from what they've been used to in previous games. Princess Zelda poses herself as Tetra, a pirate captain who is keen on helping the main protagonist Link in finding his sister who has been taken away. Journeying your way through many different seas and islands and meeting many different friends who help you along your quest. You then go through the normal core concept of a Zelda game. Get the Master Sword and go defeat Ganon to achieve your goal. Ganon is defeated and turned to stone by the blade of your Master Sword, and you are victorious. The credits roll, and you and your friends sail off to find new land. So what makes the Wind Waker a top seller? It's different. Wind Waker changed, changed much of what we knew about Zelda, and gave it to us with completely different graphics, making the characters, and especially Link, look like cartoons. At the peak of the game's popularity, many were comparing it to The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. As time went on, the game was looked at worse and worse, and sadly is one of the Zelda franchise's most forgotten additions. Although overlooked by fans, The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker was able to sell its way to 4.07 million copies worldwide, making it the fourth highest selling GameCube game of all time, and a different look on the world of Zelda that fans know and love. The third bestseller on the GameCube was able to shine its way into 6.31 million households, and is highly valued in the Mario community. And it's none other than Super Mario Sunshine. The game takes place on tropical Isle Delfino, home to the Piantas and Nokis races. Upon Mario and Peach's arrival to the resort, they find out that the island's power supply has been depleted and the island has been covered with graffiti. The graffiti culprit is called Shadow Mario, but his identity is later uncovered as Bowser's son, Bowser Jr. Mario's goal is to go out and purify the island, and he uses the flood machine developed by Professor E. Gadd. After you defeat Bowser Jr. in all nine areas, a problem will arise in Delfino Plaza, the biggest city on the island. You confront Bowser Jr. and put an end to the madness, and you and Peach can return to your vacation in peace. This game is one of Mario's GameCube highlights, and many older fans remember this game vividly and still enjoy going back and playing it. So if you're stuck inside on a snowy or rainy day, plug in your old copy of Super Mario Sunshine and immerse yourself into the sunny world you wish you could see out your window. This game is a classic and makes for a worthy spot on, as the third top-selling GameCube game of all time. No surprise here, as Mario Kart Double Dash is the second highest-selling game on the Nintendo GameCube. Double Dash was a sequel to Mario Kart Super Circuit on the Game Boy Advance and was able to sell millions of copies due to the series' previous success. Double Dash is considered one of the series' best as it did add many new features and made the game what it is today. Double Dash has all of the features that are in the series' most recent installments as it paved the way for what the series would become. The enhanced 3D graphics and smooth gameplay made for a great experience for a whole family. The game is for everyone, and there are many different characters and cars to choose from for your enjoyment. 
And now, it's time for the final entry in the number one selling GameCube game in history. You're probably not surprised at the number one selling game on GameCube, and yes, it is Super Smash Bros. Melee. This game is considered by many as one of the greatest games of all time. Melee is the second game in the Super Smash Bros. series and is widely known as the best. Melee completely turned around the not-so-great Super Smash Bros. and fans loved it. Melee took Nintendo's most popular characters and put them into a 3D fighting game in which they brawl for the player's glory. While you're playing the game, try this. Perform some sort of combo or trick and then pause. Scroll around and look at the incredible 360 degree view of your character. This was revolutionary in 2001 and showed fans the true capabilities of the GameCube. People came out in waves to purchase this classic and thousands still play this game today and even competitively. Yeah, that's right. A game from 17 years ago is still being played competitively. This just goes to show how incredible this game really is. I know I pop it into my GameCube every once in a while, and I sure have a fun time playing it. The game also has an adventure mode in which you fight different enemies in order to unlock the unlockable characters. Whether you're charging up with Pikachu or unloading your power with Link, this game creates a fun time and atmosphere for a get-together or with friends, or even to settle a within-family dispute. So yes, Super Smash Bros. is definitely one of the greatest games of all time, and earned its way to being the GameCube's top seller. So, were there any surprises on this list? Were you surprised that some games made it? Were you surprised that some games didn't? Do you have a favorite GameCube game that was really underrated? Let us know in the comments. And uh, before you go, the crew at Game Domain is looking to have a big 2018 with some really ambitious projects in the pipeline to bring better coverage of trending topics in addition to the series that we're already bringing to you. So stay tuned to our YouTube channel or look us up on Twitter at Real Game Domain. And if you want to help us grow, check out our Patreon. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Top Sellers. Hello, and welcome back to Game Domain. In today's video, we are going to be continuing our Top Seller series, where we look back at some of our favorite consoles and what games were each console's top sellers. Today we are going to be looking at one of the most popular handheld consoles of all time, Nintendo's Game Boy Advance. The Game Boy Advance, or GBA for short, was released in 2001 as a newer and more powerful version of Nintendo's Game Boy line. The GBA was able to play any Game Boy or Game Boy Color game, as well as the new Game Boy Advance cartridges. The GBA sold about 81.5 million units worldwide, and the system's market was dominated by one main franchise, but still housed an array of Nintendo classics that fans can still pop in and enjoy today. Now let's get on with the video and see what games get to call themselves top sellers. What would a Nintendo top sellers list be without at least one Mario game, right? Well, this list is no different, and coming in as the 5th best selling GBA game is Super Mario Advance 2. Upon the GBA's release, Nintendo needed a good Mario game that everybody could enjoy, from kids to adults. The idea of a Super Mario World-like handheld adventure inspired them, and right away they began development. Nintendo released Super Mario Advance alongside the GBA, both on the same day. This was a great marketing idea for Nintendo, to which they are no stranger, as it gave fans a classic character with a familiar adventure to start with on their new console. The game featured the original storyline of Super Mario Bros. 2, but gave fans an enhanced and great handheld experience. Super Mario Advance did incredibly on the shelves, prompting Nintendo to add a second installment into the series. In 2002, Super Mario Advance 2 was brought into US homes and fans were excited to play Super Mario World on the go. The game's plot is the same as the original Super Mario World, just configured for the Game Boy Advance. You can choose to play as either Mario or Luigi and venture through Dinosaur Land in your quest to save Princess Peach from the evil wrath of Bowser. After saving the princess, you are crowned victorious. Super Mario Advance 2 proved to be very successful for Nintendo as it found its way into 5.69 million Game Boy Advances and received a 92% rating on Metacritic. <sighs> Mario Kart. One of the most nostalgia-filled franchises of all time. And this is definitely something that Nintendo is aware of, as after the global fiscal success and popularity of Mario Kart 64, they brought the series down to a new handheld path. In 2001, Nintendo gave fans Mario Kart Super Circuit, the third installment in the Mario Kart series, and the first to be released on a handheld console. 
Super Circuit took features, characters, and maps from the previous two Mario Karts and blended them with new features, characters, and maps to give fans a great on-the-go experience. The graphics were revolutionary for the time, as many people were shocked and amazed that a game of such power could be played on this small little device. This enlightened some fans who refused to get the GBA, as they were now encouraged to go out and get one due to its true power. Super Circuit brought out the best in fans' competitiveness, and it also brought out the best in the GBA. Due to Super Circuit's exploitation of the Game Boy Advance's engine and fun gameplay, it was able to sell 5.91 million copies worldwide, and found itself as the fourth best-selling GBA game of all time. Now we are at a point where the GBA's sales were dominated by another particular franchise. This franchise was able to take over the gaming world in barely two years, quickly becoming one of the most successful and popular franchises of all time. And yes, you guessed it, Pokemon. Pokemon's first two generations were able to dominate the Game Boy and Game Boy colored markets, and the third generation did no different to the Game Boy Advance. So coming in at the number three spot on the GBA's top sellers list is Pokemon Emerald, the third counterpart to Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. Emerald follows the basic storyline of Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, but has a decent amount of aesthetic and plot changes that helps to differ it from its predecessors. The end of the game is focused around awakening the legendary Pokemon Rayquaza in order to stop Kyogre and Grudon from destroying the world in their battle. You venture to the Sky Pillar and summon the legendary dragon, who travels to Sudopolis City and halts the destruction. Afterwards, you can go back to the Sky Pillar and catch Rayquaza for yourself. Kyogre and Grodon are also available after you become champion, both being catchable at level 70. Pokemon Emerald also showcases different sprites for both the male and female protagonists, Brendan and May, as well as the battle sprites for every Pokemon. Emerald also makes improvements on the double battle feature as you can now face two different types of trainers instead of a couple, and you can also battle with other characters. Emerald also brought fans one of the most beloved features in all of Pokemon, the Battle Frontier. Upon becoming champion, you will receive a ticket for the SS title which takes you to the Battle Frontier. The Battle Frontier is an island in the southeastern part of Hoenn, and houses an array of seven different battle arenas for trainers to partake in. Emerald only sold 5.91 million copies due to its correlation to Ruby and Sapphire, but many still consider it the ultimate Pokemon experience, and one that every fan should play. Metacritic gave Pokemon Emerald a 76% rating as they believe the game is good in its own right, but is too similar to Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. So if you haven't played Pokemon Emerald and don't own the cartridge, we strongly suggest you download a ROM and see for yourself why this game is a top seller. Coming in as the number two top selling GBA game is another Pokemon adventure, Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. These games were the second in Pokemon's GBA line of games, and the first Pokemon remakes. Fire Red and Leaf Green were both remakes of the original two Pokemon games, Pokemon Red and Blue. After Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire's release, fans realized how great the Pokemon world could look on the Game Boy Advance, and began to fathom the idea of what the Kanto region would look like with such enhanced graphics. Nintendo began to look at this idea as well, and in 2004, they released Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. Coming off of a brand new adventure the year before, fans were delighted to re-immerse themselves into the Kanto region. You can play as either Red or the new female protagonist, Leaf, as the original games did not have a playable female character. Although these games follow the exact same storyline as the originals, there are many new and different features added to enhance the Cantonian experience. The main two of these features would be the graphics, of course, and the addition of the Sevi Islands, an archipelago consisting of nine different islands that lies just south of the Kanto region. On these islands, you can find various different quests, as well as encountering some new Pokémon that even Professor Oak hasn't seen before. The Kanto region is also presented in a whole new way, as the GBA's engine is used to make the game full of vibrant colors and beautiful sounds. Fire Red and Leaf Green certainly have more to offer than their originals, and that shows how they were able to sell 12 million copies worldwide. Now, let's move on to the number one spot and see what game gets to call itself the GBA's top seller. The previous two spots were taken up by Pokemon games, so what makes the top spot any different? Actually, the answer is nothing, because the top spot belongs to yet another Pokemon game. And yes, the GBA's top selling game is... Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. After Pokemon's world domination phase, the craze began to die down, and many thought it would be the end of the franchise. But after the release of the Game Boy Advance, Game Freak and Nintendo teamed up again to create a whole new world for fans to enjoy. In 2003, in the US, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire were released and immediately struck the hearts of fans. These games were criticized at the time, as Pokemon popularity was at its lowest point and the large majority of the fanbase aged out of playing the games. 
But as many say, Pokemon will never die, and the series prevailed and was able to sell 16.2 million copies of these brand new Hoenn adventures. Players indulged in the tropical land of Hoenn, made up of one main island and other small islands. They beat one of the two evil teams, Team Magma and Ruby, and Team Aqua and Sapphire, and crowned themselves as champion of the Pokemon League. These games completely changed the game of Pokemon with all new gameplay mechanics, as well as the introduction of Pokemon natures and abilities. Each nature and ability has a different effect on the Pokemon, whether it's type, move, or a status ailment. But in the end, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire added a lot to the Pokemon franchise and are very worthy of their spot as the Game Boy Advance's top seller. So what did you guys think of today's video? Do you own any of the games in the top seller list? What console would you like us to look at next? Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching Game Domain. Hello, and welcome back to Game Domain and another episode of our Top Sellers series. So far we have covered two consoles, the Nintendo GameCube and the Nintendo Game Boy Advance, and today we will be bringing you yet another Nintendo console. This console is Nintendo's third best-selling console, and is only the fifth gaming console in history to reach over 100 million units sold. If you haven't figured it out yet, the console we are talking about is the Nintendo Wii. Released on November 19th, 2006, the Wii quickly became one of the most popular consoles of all time, and some may consider it the greatest family console of all time. The two eyes in the name Wii represent two people playing together, truly showing that Nintendo always intended for this console to be the family-friendly giant success that it quickly became. The Wii launched with many successful titles to start, including Call of Duty 3, Madden NFL 07, Wii Play, Wii Sports, Cars the Video Game, and The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. As the years went on, the Wii was able to sell hundreds of millions of titles and served as the pilot for Nintendo's virtual console service, and boy did it pay off. A total of 397 games were, were re-released as Nintendo Virtual Console games on the Wii, and that list included big name titles like Donkey Kong, Super Mario Bros., and Super Mario Bros. 2, The Legend of Zelda, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, and The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, as well as hundreds of other NES, SNES, N64, and Sega titles. All of these aspects helped the Wii's popularity grow and even stay alive today. And let's see what games stood out among all the rest on the Wii. Here's what five games get to call themselves the Wii's top sellers. As a brief disclaimer, this list will not include the Wii Fit series, Wii Play, or any virtual console games. The number five best-selling game on the Wii is probably no surprise to any of you fans out there, as this entry is part of an esteemed franchise that is considered one of the greatest franchises of all time, and is definitely one of Nintendo's greatest and most popular franchises. This game was able to sell 13.27 million copies worldwide, and was a sequel to what is considered one of the single greatest games of all time. Super Smash Bros. Brawl revolutionized the fighting style of the Super Smash Bros. series and did an outstanding job considering that it was a sequel to Super Smash Bros. Melee. Although Brawl never became as popular as its predecessor, its fantastic gameplay and incredible story made it a worthy game to have on your game rack. The game introduced many new characters into the series, and many of them could only be unlocked through traveling between different worlds and dimensions in the game's story mode. Brawl released in Japan and North America in early 2008, and the game's multiplayer mode turned friends into foes as they duke it out in a clash of colliding universes. Players can also complete the Subspace Emissary storyline and unlock the unlockable characters. The game received a 93 rating from Metacritic, and much of the game's criticism stems from the fact that the game backed off from the very quick and fast-paced gameplay of Melee, and this is mainly because critics were just flat-out disappointed that the game wasn't exactly what they wanted it to be. But in the end, Brawl was a great addition to the Super Smash Bros. series, and players still enjoy it today, which shows us why it is the Wii's fifth best-selling game. The next best-selling game on this list is the Wii's entry to Nintendo's baby, the Super Mario Bros. franchise. The new Super Mario Bros. Wii was released in 2009 and enhanced everything fans love about the historic 2D side-scrolling game that is truly a piece of gaming history. The game's plot is not very different from any other Mario platforming game, as your goal is to save Princess Peach from the hands of the evil boss Bowser. The game is closely correlated to New Super Mario Bros., which was released for the Nintendo DS not long before. 
The game is majorly played with the Wii's motion control remote and nunchuck. The game houses eight different worlds to travel through, and each level brings about new fun and puzzles that make your mind churn while your head spins in an attempt to dodge enemies and collect coins at the same time. The game is a 2D side-scroller, but adds many 3D aspects to the game as well, resulting in a 2.5D appearance to the player. The game is also the first Super Mario Bros. game to feature simultaneous multiplayer, as you can play with up to four different people. Player 1 plays as Mario, Player 2 plays as Luigi, and Players 3 and 4 choose from different colored toads to play as. Teamwork is key in this multiplayer, so be sure to work together in order to save the princess. The game received much praise from fans and an 87 rating from Metacritic, leaving us with a sense of assurance as to why the game is the Wii's fourth top seller. <sighs> it feels nice and hot in here. A little too hot, actually. Oh, now we get it. We're standing next to Woohoo Island's very own volcano. Yes, that's right, folks. The third best-selling game on the Nintendo Wii is Wii Sports Resort. This game is a personal fan favorite for some of us at Game Domain, as it expands on the previous Wii Sports entry and gives fans a whole island to explore and a ton of great and fun games for us to play. The game introduced 11 new sports, swordplay, wakeboarding, frisbee, archery, basketball, table tennis, power cruising, canoeing, cycling, parachuting, and piloting. Our favorite game mode is just flying around in the plane, as you can travel around the beautiful island and visit all the great landmarks and even fly into the volcano. This game is the epitome of Wii's family-friendly vibe, as just about anybody can play this game and have fun. The game was developed based off of the Wii Motion Plus adapter, and the game showcases the capabilities that it had to offer. The motion controls also add a sense of realism to the game, as it makes you do work in order to achieve in-game goals. The game received an 80 rating from Metacritic, but will always have a special spot in our hearts, and it is no surprise as to why this game is the Wii's third top seller. The second best-selling title on the Wii is yet another game part of a larger hit Nintendo franchise, and this spot belongs to none other than Mario Kart Wii of the Mario Kart franchise. Mario Kart Wii gave fans a whole new way to see the series of Mario Kart as graphics were now enhanced to a level that still hold up even today, and the smooth gameplay rivals all of the franchise's entries to this date. The game also implemented the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection feature, making players able to compete with other players all around the globe while sitting on their couch. The game was able to introduce a perfect blend of new characters, vehicles, and tracks with the old ones that everybody knows and loves to this day. The game had a companion release alongside it as well, as Nintendo released the Wii Wheel for players to use while playing the game. Many old school players used GameCube controllers for their play, but newer players utilized the wheel and many were able to master their skills with it. The game was received overwhelmingly well by fans, and critics gave it some flack, but still came around to rate the game on its true meaning, a three-letter word that goes like this, F-U-N, FUN. And this game was incredibly fun, and you could have the whole family or friend gathering just to play this title, all the while time is flying by due to the endless amount of people saying, let's play just one more, over and over again. Metacritic gave this game an 82 rating, but we at Game Domain could easily give this title a 95 to 100, truly showing the meaning behind why this game is the Wii's second top seller. And now, for the moment you have all been waiting for. If you didn't already know what the Wii's top seller is before clicking on this video, then please be ready for a big shock. Make sure you have no food or drink in your mouth, as it will probably come out. And so, the Nintendo Wii's top seller is... Wii Sports! Yes, that's right. You are hearing us correctly. Wii Sports is the Wii's top seller, and it isn't even close. The second best-selling game on the Wii was just showcased to you a moment ago, and Mario Kart Wii sold just over 37 million copies. 37.10 million to be exact. And guess how many copies of Wii Sports have been sold? Oh, I don't know, just 82.85 million. And yes, if anybody did the math, that is about 2.2 times more copies sold than the second best-selling game. So your main question is probably, why did Wii Sports sell such an overwhelmingly high amount of copies? And the answer is this. The game came with the Wii console for the year or two after launch. 
Now, you're probably wondering why this would count as to being on our list, but the reason is because this game was still able to sell about 35 to 40 million copies on its own, which would still be number one on this list, and is also the best-selling single-platform game of all time. That is a big title to hold. And now let's get into what makes this game so special. You can choose to play one of five sports. Tennis, baseball, bowling, golf, and boxing. The Wii Remote's motion controls are able to pick up the player's every movement and implement those movements into the game, causing the in-game character to react to the real-life thinking of the player. This is really quite remarkable and was revolutionary for the time. A game that played due to the real-life action of the player? For decades, that idea was unfathomable, and Wii Sports made that happen. This game was great for parties, and the multiplayer is still fun to go back and play. Fans love this game to death, and even critics see the incredible influence this game had on the gaming community and the gaming world. Metacritic gave this game a 76, but we at Game Domain, and probably the majority of fans, would give this game a 100 rating. And so with all the joy this game brought us, Wii Sports definitely deserves to be the Nintendo's Wii top seller. So what did you guys think about today's video? Were there any entries on this list that surprised you? And if so, what were they? What console do you want us to look at next? Be sure to tell us in the comments below and don't forget to check out the previous two entries in the series which can be found in the description. Down there you can also find the links to our Discord and our second channel, Game Domain News. So go and check those out too along with some of our recent videos. We have a ton of great videos lined up as we head straight into the summer and we hope you stay tuned for more Game Domain content and more episodes of Top Sellers. As always, Thanks for watching Game Domain. Hello, and welcome back to Game Domain as we bring to you another episode of our Top Seller series. I'm your host, Kerberos. Now, up till now, with our Top Seller series, we've been covering Nintendo consoles, but today we're going to break tradition and talk to you about none other than the Xbox 360. The Xbox 360 was released by Microsoft in 2005 as a successor to the original Xbox. The 360 quickly became one of the more popular and successful gaming consoles and many gamers today still have nostalgic feelings about the console, myself included. The 360 has sold over 84 million units worldwide to date and features an array of classic games that fans love. The Modern Warfare series, Black Ops 1 and 2, Halo 3 and 4, and many other major gaming franchises took advantage of this great console and were able to sell a lot of games and make a lot of money for it. Now, let's get into the video and see what games get to call themselves the Xbox 360's top sellers. Number 5. Minecraft Xbox 360 Edition The number 5 best-selling game in the history of the Xbox 360 should be no surprise. And this is one of those AAA games which have high budgets and have been released across multiple consoles. This game is Minecraft, which took the gaming world by storm when it was released in 2011. The game quickly became one of the most popular games of all time and has been released on consoles from the Nintendo 3DS to even the PlayStation Vita. Now we don't really have to explain to you guys what Minecraft is and what it's about, but we can tell you that the Xbox 360 sold so many copies due to fans from the PC wanting it on multiple consoles. Sure, there were new fans who first played the game on the Xbox 360, but the majority of sales were from people who couldn't get enough of this block placing game. There's so much to do and so much to see in Minecraft that people have spent up to 15 days just in one world alone, and just about every gamer has played this game. Minecraft Xbox 360 Edition was probably the best console version of the game, and really even matched the PC Java version everybody's come to love. It's no surprise that this game is finding its way onto this list, and Minecraft is certainly worthy of being the fifth best-selling game on the Xbox 360. Number 4. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Coming in as the fourth best-selling game on the Xbox 360 is a game that helped to pave the way to the incredible open-world games we've gotten in recent years, and that is The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Skyrim is the most recent installment of the traditional Elder Scrolls series and was released back in November 2011. The player completes different quests and improves skills and really plays the game at their own pace. You can play the game from either first-person perspective or third-person, and the graphics still hold up today. Skyrim has become a very popular game over the years and has since seen graphical upgrades and recent re-releases. Skyrim gives the player their own set of feet to walk on, and then the player controls their journey from there. Throughout your journey, you can take on different dungeons, explore the wilderness, and stock up on goods in cities and villages. 
Skyrim has and probably will always be remembered as one of the true pioneers of open world gaming, and it certainly deserves being the fourth best selling game on the Xbox 360. Number 3 Halo 3. Coming in as the third best selling game on the Xbox 360 is one of the most popular multiplayer experiences of all time, and quite frankly, my favorite game on the console Halo 3. Halo 3 is the third installment in the Halo series, which follows the story of Master Chief and the Arbiter. Halo 3 was released in the early stage of the Xbox 360's lifespan and was quickly welcomed with open arms by fans of the beloved Halo franchise. Halo 3's gameplay was the smoothest in the franchise at the time, and it brought back many returning aspects from the previous two installments. Halo 3 also introduced the map editing tool Forge, which lets people create and edit maps of their own or an existing map. Players would then have the ability to make their own fun little mini-games or adventures, making it a fun experience for them and their friends to enjoy. And on a personal note, if you've never tried Griffball, it's what's up. <laughs> Halo 3 was one of the pioneers of multiplayer gaming and used the brand new Xbox Live feature to create an online experience in which players from all around the globe would square off against one another in different game modes and earn XP, which would help the players to rank up their achievements. This seems like a simple multiplayer system now, but back then, it was truly revolutionary. Halo 3 will always be remembered as one of the most iconic games in the Halo franchise, as well as a huge step for the world of multiplayer gaming that we all enjoy in our lives today. The number two greatest selling game on the Xbox 360, once again, should be a no-brainer. Some of you will probably wonder why this game isn't number one, but we'll get to why that's the case in just a bit. This game is, of course, Grand Theft Auto V. Grand Theft Auto V is one of the most played games right now, and it's been out for almost five years. Much like Skyrim, the game defines open world and the massive multiplayer gives fans an endless amount of fun. New stuff is being added almost weekly, and this game's popularity might carry its way right into the release of GTA 6, whenever that happens. <clears throat> hey, Rockstar, where's GTA 6? Ah! But all this stuff is happening nowadays, so what made the Xbox 360 version start this trend and do so well? Fans were more than hyped up for the release of GTA V, and the game looked beautiful, even on the Xbox 360. The openness and great graphics made fans' wallets shiver, and they went out and pre-ordered the game immediately. The Xbox 360 version is basically dead now, but in its reign, it certainly deserved being the number two best-selling game on the Xbox 360. But what was number one? Let's find out. Number one. Connect Adventures. All right, before you kill us, just hear us out on this one. This number one pick is gonna rile up a lot of fans, but we don't make the list. It's all straight factual data on the sales of the five best-selling games on the Xbox 360. The number one is a very similar situation to what we had on Top Sellers Wii Edition. And yeah, the number one game is yet another gimmick from the company who made the console. <sighs> Connect Adventures. Connect Adventures was released alongside with the purchase of an Xbox 360 with the all-new Connect. We aren't going to get into the details of the Connect, as we really don't have much time to, but it was basically a camera that detected your movements and implemented them into in-game actions. Kind of a more advanced Wii Motion Plus. So, with every new gimmick, there's got to be that gimmick's flagship experimental game. And in this case, that's Connect Adventures. Connect Adventures was a series of, kind of fun, at least for the first time, little mini-games you could play by yourself or with others. And that's basically it. There's not much to say about this title other than the fact that it was made to sell more Connects and... It worked. It sold 24 million copies, and even more connects were sold, so good job. With all that said, we're officially crowning Connect Adventures as the Xbox 360's top seller. Thanks for watching today's edition of Top Sellers, and just a reminder for you guys that we don't make this list. If I was in charge, Halo 3 would be the top four selling games on the Xbox 360, probably followed by Borderlands, but that's beside the point. Yay! We literally look on Wikipedia as to what games were statistically the five top selling games on the 360 and talk about them. Don't forget to check out our other top seller videos where we've covered the GameCube, Game Boy Advance, and Wii. Leave a like and subscribe and tell us down in the comments what console you want us to do next.
Be sure to check out our community Discord in the links below, as all of our fans are welcome to come and talk gaming with our staff. Stay tuned for great gaming content, and thanks for watching Game Domain. I'm Kerberos, and this has been another episode of Top Sellers. Hello and welcome back to Game Domain, as today we are bringing you yet another addition to our Top Seller series. Our last video was on the Xbox 360's Top Sellers, and in this video we are going to be making a return to the Nintendo consoles with the Nintendo DS. The original Nintendo DS was built as a successor to the very popular Nintendo Game Boy Advance, and boy was it something different. The DS was equipped with two screens, with the bottom one even being touch sensitive for use with the brand new stylus. The brand new device also gave us a built-in microphone, as well as internet capability that was yet to be seen in a handheld console. These little things that now seem so simple in our modern gaming day were revolutionary and somewhat luxurious for a console to have back then. And these innovations to the handheld console in the form of the Nintendo DS are the main reasons why it has been able to sell over 154 million copies, making it the best-selling handheld console of all time and the second best-selling console of any kind. So now that you have a bit more background on the Nintendo DS's features, which we're sure most of you probably already knew, let's get into the five games that get to call themselves the Nintendo DS's top sellers. Coming in as the fifth top-selling game on the Nintendo DS is from arguably Nintendo's most popular franchise, if not the second most popular, Pokemon. Out of the four main series Pokemon games to be released on the Nintendo DS, the best-selling ones should be no surprise as they were also Pokemon's debut games on the DS. If you haven't figured it out already, we are of course talking about Generation 4's Diamond and Pearl. Diamond and Pearl were released in Japan back on September 28, 2006 and in North America on April 22, 2007. Pokemon Diamond and Pearl were able to sell 17.67 million copies worldwide and there are still people trying to get their hands on these games today as well. Why would people still be trying to get these these games over 10 years after their release? These games are quite frankly the most revolutionary in the franchise, not including the first generation games of course, mainly due to the way they mastered the new features that the Nintendo DS gave us. These games featured a great story and gave us arguably the greatest roster of Pokemon in the series, but those are both points we have talked about time and time again in other videos. So right now, we are just going to talk about the features that these games have thanks to the DS. First off, the updated sounds on the DS made Pokemon's famous composer Yunichi Masuda able to give us probably the best soundtrack in the franchise. The Wi-Fi connectivity of the DS gave us for the first time a global trading system which is now known as the infamous GTS and online competitive battle. This set the scene for what is now a very big competitive scene and in each game since Diamond and Pearl it has been more and more improved on. The DS's touchscreen capability also allowed for Diamond and Pearl to feature the Poketch device, which has a clock, calculator, map, and many more gadgets that can be unlocked as you get further into the game. Diamond and Pearl were great titles that showed Nintendo fans and more so Pokemon fans the true power of the Nintendo DS, and they are certainly worthy of being the fifth top seller on the DS. Coming in as the fourth best-selling game on the Nintendo DS is one that we haven't even heard of until we started the script for this video, and most of you probably haven't heard of this game's existence either. Brain Age was released back in 2005 in Japan and one full year later in North America. Brain Age was able to sell over 19 million copies worldwide, which is an oddly high number for a puzzle game designed for educational purposes. The game features different brain-teasing mini-games, ranging from puzzles to mathematical equations to Sudoku puzzles. The game was designed to be played for a little bit each day as it tried to help Help stimulate kids' brains to get them to educate themselves outside of school. There is really not much else to say about this game, other than the fact that it seems it did what it was designed to do, as it found its way into the homes of a bit over 19 million people and helped to get kids' brains working through the fun and enjoyment of a handheld video game. The third best-selling game on the Nintendo DS should be no surprise to anybody watching this video, and it comes from one of Nintendo's more fun and family-oriented franchises. Mario Kart DS is the DS's iconic installment of the great series, and it could be argued as the best in the series as well. Mario Kart DS was released in 2005 in both North America and Japan, with North America receiving the game one month earlier in odd fashion. The majority of the game's praise comes from the great graphics and gameplay that developers were able to get out of the brand new console. These graphics were something that many thought they would never see out of a handheld console, and Nintendo wowed everybody across the gaming world. These graphics were a massive improvement from the Game Boy Advance's edition of Mario Kart, and felt more like a true in-home console version of the game. This game is the third highest rated Mario Kart game by Metacritic, and the second highest highest rated handheld Mario Kart game. The DS version brought us what we now know as the usual five single player game modes, Grand Prix, Time Trial, Versus, Battle, and Mission. 
We're not going to go through and describe each of these as most of you already know all of them, but this game mastered all of these modes and set the stage for the much improved versions of these modes we see today in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe for the Nintendo Switch. And the last thing that made this game sell so well is that it was the first iteration of the Mario Kart series to feature online Wi-Fi play. This is yet another instance, just like Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, in which the DS's Wi-Fi capability opened the door to a huge competitive scene for a franchise. All these reasons are why Mario Kart D DS was able to sell so many copies and find itself as the third top seller on the Nintendo DS. The runner-up entry is probably a surprise to some and the furthest thing from a surprise to everybody else. This is none other than the Nintendogs game, and this spot contains all three versions of the games because they are basically all the same game. The game was released universally back on April 21st, 2005, and to date has sold a total of 23.96 million copies to date over all three versions. These three versions include the original released version and the two re-released special editions. This game is a relatively calm and relaxing title, as what could go wrong while you're petting, playing with, and taking care of a virtual puppy. This game teaches kids how to take care of dogs, and if you mess up, it's not like anything legitimate can happen, which is the best part. Nintendogs doesn't really have very much content that makes it such a high selling game, but the main reason this is sold so well is because it is one of the most kid-friendly Nintendo games ever made. The game's rather simplistic and not at all complicated gameplay makes it a great game for anybody over the age of 6 to play, and even for people who are not very good gamers. Nintendogs is definitely the most calming top seller on the Nintendo DS, and that certainly helped it on its ride to becoming the second top seller on the Nintendo DS. And here is the moment that most of you clicked on this video for, and that is the Nintendo DS's top seller. This game is a member of Nintendo's flagship franchise and is more than worthy of the title that it has attained. And yes, for those of you who don't know yet, the Nintendo DS's top seller is New Super Mario Bros., the game that started the line of games that just had a new entry announced for the Nintendo Switch. New Super Mario Bros. is the second string of games in the Super Mario Bros. series and takes what everybody loved about the original Super Mario Bros. games and graphically enhanced them, giving the new generation of games gamers an updated taste of the past. New Super Mario Bros. was released back in May of 2005 in both Japan and North America and has been able to sell a little over 30 million copies to date, the only DS game to sell over 30 million copies. The game follows the generic story of Mario saving the princess, but does add some new elements to the story we all know so well and love so much. The biggest of these is the addition of things only found in 3D Mario games being implemented into this 2D platformer, such as the ground pound, triple jump, and wall jump. This cemented this game as one of the first to master the idea of a 2.5D game, which is the basis of every new Super Mario Bros. game to follow this one. If you don't know what a 2.5D game is, go check out our What is a 2.5D Game video, which we will leave a link in the description for. This game also offers a multiplayer mode in which one player can play as Mario and another can connect to play as Luigi. New Super Mario Bros. offered fans a new take on the Super Mario Bros. franchise and introduced it to many gamers of the younger generation who never got a chance to play the original games. This game also launched the second half of the new Super Mario Bros. series and a port of the new Super Mario Bros. U, which was just announced for release on the Nintendo Switch in mid-January of 2019 as new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. The ability to bring friends and families together with one of the most popular franchises of all time and the new legacy and series of games that followed suit are why this game was able to sell so many copies and crown itself as a Nintendo DS's top seller. Thanks for watching today's edition of our Top Seller series. And just for your knowledge, we don't come up with this list. This list is based on statistical and factual data on what games sold the highest on their respective console. These five games are the ones that fit their criteria for the Nintendo DS. So with that being said, what did you think of these five games? Are there any games you feel not worthy of the amount of copies they sold? And if so, what games do you think should have been there instead? Tell us in the comments below and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And be sure to check out some of our more recent videos, which we will leave links in the description for, as well as our Discord and new info regarding new channel updates. Our Discord is open to you guys to come and chat with our staff members and each other about gaming, so don't be afraid to join. We also encourage you guys to download Cash for Apps using our link in the description. Cash for Apps is an app that allows you to get points for just downloading apps on your phone, and you don't even need to keep the apps. You can save up the points to use for gift cards for various different online stores, and some of the gift cards can be used to purchase V-Bucks for Fortnite. Stay tuned to Game Domain for more great content, and once again, thanks for watching today's edition of Top Sellers. Hello, and welcome back to Game Domain. Today, we're bringing you our first Top Sellers of 2019, and it really is the first of our Top Sellers series since the Nintendo DS edition back from November 28th. 
This edition is going to be about one of the more nostalgic consoles we cover, as it was really popular when a large majority of the current generation of gamers were growing up. The Nintendo 64, commonly known as just the N64, was first introduced on November 24th, 1995 at Nintendo's Shoshinkai trade show. The hype for this console would build up rather quickly, as it was originally set to release just a month later during the Christmas shopping season. The console was then delayed until April of 1996, but was not actually released until two months later. After those months of anticipation, the N64 was officially released on June 23rd of 1996, while North America didn't officially see the title until September 29th of 1996. The N64 immediately became a hit as it not only found its way into millions of homes, but millions of hearts as well. To date, the console has sold 32.93 million units. Now, let's get into what games can get to call themselves the N64's top sellers. Honorable Mentions We're gonna start this video off a little differently than our other top sellers by changing up the format a bit and making this new addition to the video. We felt it was necessary to shed some light on not just the top 5 best selling N64 games, but also the 6th through 10th games as well. So before we get into the actual list, we're going to tell you guys what games just missed out on being in the top 5 best-selling games on the N64. Banjo-Kazooie is the console's 10th best-selling game with 3.65 million copies sold. Star Fox 64 is the console's 9th best-selling game with 4 million copies sold. Diddy Kong Racing comes in as the 8th best-selling game on the console with 4.88 million copies sold. Donkey Kong 64 is the console's 7th best-selling game, with 5.27 million copies sold. And finally, the last of our honorable mentions is Pokemon Stadium, which sold 5.46 million copies. Now, let's get into the top 5 best-selling games on the N64. Number 5. The 5th top seller on the N64 is, the series that just can't be stopped, the original Super Smash Bros. Although the original Super Smash Bros. game is in no way obsolete in comparison to all four of its successors, evidenced by the fact that they're all still played heavily today, you can't take away from the fact of how good this original game really is. We truly take for granted this first game, as we often overlook it. Without the original game on the N64 though, we wouldn't be grinding World of Light and Ultimate right now. Super Smash Bros. is the most unique fighting game on the market, as most of its staple features were created to differentiate itself from other fighting games. The prime example of this is the damage system, which was revolutionary back when it first came out in 1999. Rather than you losing health, you gain damage points in the form of percentages. The higher the percent, the more likely you or your opponents are to be knocked off the map. There is of course countless other features that we can talk about, but we have all heard so much about Smash over the course of the last two months and we really would just be eating our own words if we kept repeating ourselves. The bottom line is that this game is historic in its revolutionary greatness, and it left the foundation for one of the most iconic Nintendo franchises of all time to build on. With all that said, Super Smash Bros is more than worthy of being the fifth top seller on the N64. Number 4 Oh boy, and we thought we talked about the last game too much. The fourth top seller on the Nintendo 64 is a game that, well, I'm pretty sure you can figure out what we think of it based on the countless times we have talked about it in our previous videos. This game is a Legend of Zelda game, the greatest Nintendo game of all time and probably just the greatest game of all time period. Yes, of course we are talking about The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. As we've mentioned time and time again, this game is one of the most revolutionary games we've ever seen, as it changed the entire course of gaming up until even today. This game is truly the first ever open world game that we've received, so you could even say that it's the foundation for all of the massive landscape games we've got, like GTA V or Red Dead Redemption 2. It also mastered the idea of 3D gaming that Super Mario 64 put in place, and it also advanced on the whole camera angle aspect as well. The revolving camera as you focus on an enemy is something that was never thought of as being possible before, but this game never failed to deliver on that. And how could we forget all of the incredible locations in this game that are accompanied by iconic orchestral tracks and incredible graphical appearances as well? The game has the ability to suck a player in, and just keep them playing the game for hours upon hours. The vast openness of the map and all of its itty bitty details make the scenery beautiful to journey through, adding an even more enjoyable feel to the game. 
We've sang so much praise towards this game, and we just keep repeating the same things over and over again if we keep on going, just like it would have been with Super Smash Bros. With all of its incredible reception, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is more than worthy of being the fourth top seller on the Nintendo 64. Number 3. The third top seller on the N64 is one of the only well-known shooting games on the console, and that is of course the James Bond classic GoldenEye 007. The game is a first-person shooter based on the 1995 James Bond movie GoldenEye, obviously. The game features a single-player campaign in which you play as legendary agent James Bond, who is trying to prevent a group of criminals from using a satellite weapon against the city of London to cause a financial meltdown across the globe. Just like in the movies, Bond's job is to basically kill the bad guys and spoil their evil plot, and, to no surprise, he succeeds. GoldenEye 007 also has a split-screen mode with up to four players, which can really be described as just flat-out fast-paced fun that is unlike any first-person shooter in today's realm of gaming. At the time of its release in 1997, GoldenEye was arguably the best game on the console, but once Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask came out, those notions were quickly squandered, and over time, people came to realize how amazing Super Mario 64 was as well. And even though the game is not as highly touted as it once was, it's still an incredibly fun gaming masterpiece. It paved the way for many first-person shooters that we have today. The only gripe that we have is, does it really belong on the family-friendly Nintendo console? In all seriousness, GoldenEye 007 is certainly worthy of being the third top seller on the N64. Number 2. The second top seller on the Nintendo 64 is one of the most enjoyable and all-around fun games in the history of gaming, and that is Mario Kart 64. Mario Kart 64 came out in Japan in 1996 as the successor to the original Super Mario Kart on the SNES, and let's just say that was a certainly much more improved version. The N64's capability of 3D gaming made the game feel so much more alive than the original, as the previous technical limitations made it inconceivable to variations in bridges, walls, elevations, and pits with specific depths. All of these landmark features would of course end up finding themselves in subsequent Mario Kart games, with a whole lot of new characters as well. Mario Kart 64 featured only 8 playable characters, but it's safe to say that we fell in love with each of them even though there was only a small amount. Mario, Luigi, Peach, Toad, Yoshi, and Bowser all return from the original game, while Wario and Donkey Kong debut as replacements for the Koopa Troopa and Donkey Kong Jr. The addition of the all-new 3D polygon system really made the true greatness of this series come to light, as both the characters and the surrounding tracks felt more alive than we could have ever imagined them. And so with that said, Mario Kart 64 more than deserves its place as the second top seller on the Nintendo 64. Number 1. Now, the reveal for the top seller on the N64 will probably not be a shock to some of you diehards out there, and to the rest of you, I guess you may be a bit surprised as to what game sold the most copies on the console. Like Super Smash Bros. and Ocarina of Time, we've sang this game's praises on numerous occasions, mainly due to it being our second greatest Nintendo game of all time, and our greatest Super Mario game of all time. Yup, that's right! Super Mario 64 is the best selling game on the Nintendo 64. Now some of you may be saying that this game only sold the most copies because it was one of the console's two launch titles here in the US, which would mean that at first, everybody was getting it because it was one of two games that you could play with the new console. Although that is a very valid point, we can assure you that even if it wasn't a launch title, it would have most certainly found its way to one of the Nintendo 64's top sellers, and might even find itself as number one still. But we can't do anything to change that now. And we have the factual evidence that proves that Super Mario 64's 11.91 million copies sold was the highest by far of any video game on the console. Just like Ocarina of Time, Super Mario 64 was one of the most revolutionary titles in gaming history, and was the first to introduce us to this extraordinary thing called 3D gaming. The use of the polygon-designed engine and development set the stage for thousands of games to follow it, and that is something that can never be overlooked. The revolving camera that sets focus on what direction you want Mario to look in just by the moving of a stick was mind-blowing at the time, and is of course no big deal by today's standards. All of this game's timeless features blend to make it one of the greatest games of all time, and we have certainly backed up that fact and supported this game's greatness in both our Ranking the Super Mario games and Top 10 Greatest Nintendo Games of All Time videos, so be sure to check those out if you haven't already. 
Also, please keep in mind that we don't come up with this list, and it's not a ranking of the N64 games in terms of quality. It's literally a factual list based off of what games were recorded to sell the most on the Nintendo 64, and we present them to you in the exact order that they are recorded in. And with that being said, we are of course crowning Super Mario 64 as the Nintendo 64's top seller. Well that was certainly one of our longer top sellers, so tell us what you think. Did you like today's video? Were you surprised about any of the games in this video being a top seller? Tell us down in the comments below, and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Also, we want to thank you guys once again for an incredible 2018, as our main highlight was reaching the milestone of 10,000 subs. We also want to grow our Instagram account, so we highly encourage all of our viewers to go and give us a follow over on Instagram, at RealGameDomain. There, we will be giving channel updates as well as exclusive sneak peeks to future projects, series, and videos. Be sure to check out some of our more recent videos, which will be linked in the description down below, as well as our Discord and new information regarding channel updates. Our Discord is free to the public, so don't be afraid to join. We have great discussions about gaming topics, and it's a great way to communicate or even play with your fellow gaming fanatics. We'll also have the links to our store, where you can purchase an array of game domain merchandise, ranging from mouse pads to phone cases. Stay tuned to Game Domain for more great content, and thanks for watching today's video. Attention, all Game Domain fans. We hope you enjoyed this video. Now, if you did, remember to subscribe, like this video, and then check out some of our other videos. Please, join our Discord to chat with our staff and our other GD fans. Also, check out our Patreon, our merch store, and other links all down in the description. Thank you. Hey everyone and welcome back to Game Domain. Today we are bringing you the long-awaited next installment in our Top Seller series. As now we finally have monetization again, we can finally continue our top series like Top Sellers, Games You Need, 33 Crazy Facts, and much more. So be sure to stay tuned for the next 33 Crazy Facts, which has become a fan favorite among you guys. It should be coming out in the next few weeks, so stay tuned. Our previous top sellers was on the home console, the Nintendo 64. And with this episode, we are going to be reverting it back a little bit to the handheld side of Nintendo consoles. Which, for the most part, are dominated by one specific Nintendo franchise. The one that has that bright yellow mascot. Hmm. I wonder who that could be. Well, in any case, I guess you'll just have to wait and see. The Nintendo 3DS is arguably the most groundbreaking handheld console in Nintendo's history, as it gave us so much more than just a 3D screen, which probably would have been enough for our love anyway. The 3DS also might just hold the widest variety of games of any console ever, just due to the fact of the sheer amount of virtual console games for you to work your way through. So, with that said, let's get into the video and see what games get to call themselves Nintendo 3DS's top sellers. Before we get into the actual top 5, let's start off by giving you guys 10 through 6 of top sellers on the 3DS, so we can just shed some light on the titles that just missed out. Tomodachi Life has taken the 10th spot on the list, with about 6.4 million copies sold on the 3DS. Next up on the list being Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, sitting at that 9th spot with about 8.28 million copies sold. Sitting at number 8 on the list is going to be Super Smash Bros for the Nintendo 3DS, with about 9.45 million copies sold, probably because people are waiting for the Wii U version. Animal Crossing New Leaf is in the 7th spot on the Nintendo 3DS with about 12.10 million copies sold. And finally, number 6 going to Super Mario 3D Land, with about 12.41 million copies sold. Just missing out on being on the actual list. With the honorable mentions out of the way now, let's get into the main list and see what games get to call themselves Nintendo 3DS's top sellers. The number 5 top seller on the handheld icon known as the 3DS comes from Nintendo's flagship franchise. And no, it's not the one we were alluding to at the tail end of the intro. Released on August 19th, 2012 in North America, New Super Mario Bros. 2 is a direct sequel to the original New Super Mario Bros. In so many ways, its physical gameplay enhancements made the game a lot more enjoyable to play than its largely well-received predecessor. 
While the previous title had 2.5D graphics, the ability of the Nintendo 3DS to play games in 3D enhanced this 2.5D feature so much more. The game spans across nine worlds, which are broken down into six main worlds and three special. One of the major discrepancies of the game is that it's largely similar in gameplay aspects to that of the original New Super Mario Bros. But something that can't be taken away from this sequel is the much improved level design that we received. Both fans and critics adored the creativity that went into each level in this entire game. The game has the same 2D side-scrolling appearance as most handheld Super Mario games do, however the ability to set the 3DS in 3D mode made the game feel so much more like a 2.5D game. The 3D in the 3DS games is something that's really hard to explain how it appears, as you can only really see what it looks like if you have the game in front of you with your own eyes, so we'll leave the feel of this game up to memory and imagination. New Super Mario Bros. 2 was able to sell about 13.08 million copies worldwide, and making it Nintendo 3DS's fifth top seller. The fourth top seller in the Nintendo 3DS is a personal favorite nostalgic-filled game by some of us here at Game Domain. Well. Actually, it's really just one person here at Game Domain. Hey guys, this is the note from the writer, and this game is literally one of the greatest remakes of all time, as it is the remake of the first game I have ever played. Oh, uh, I don't think I was supposed to read that part. Well, at least we gotta give him credit at one point. Anyway, let's just get back on track here. Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, commonly just referred to as Oras by Pokemon fans, are remakes of 2003's Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, with some features implemented from the third game, Emerald. Released on November 21st, 2014 in North America, Oras gave Pokemon fans what they've been waiting for since 2010's remake of Heart Gold and Soul Silver, a beautifully enhanced remake of the Hoenn region. The Hoenn region is arguably the most diverse region in all of Pokemon, as it entails so many different geological features on just one massive tropical island. The region has two mountains, one being the massive fire-breathing Mount Chimney, and the other being the Pokemon Graveyard Mountain sitting on its own island, Mount Pyre, which has one of the coolest musical themes in all of Pokemon. The region also has a slew of tropical islands like the Battle Frontier, which sadly had its full form absent from Oras. Then there's the massive Waterfall Island that holds Evergrande City, home to the Victory Road and the Hoenn Pokemon League. Then of course there's the coolest design city in all of Pokemon with Sutopolis City, which sits inside a massive crater. And this isn't even accounting for all of the different tropical rainforest routes like Route 119 and Route 120. The Hoenn region's diversity is something that we could really just do a whole documentary on as there's so much to talk about. But we weren't just praising the diversity for no reason, because it actually has something to do with Oros's biggest feature, the soaring feature. Being able to soar around the whole region on either Latias or Latios is the coolest thing in all of Pokemon. And it also opens the door to be able to explore all the different Mirage spots where you can catch basically every non-mythical legendary Pokemon. The game also added the post-game Delta episode, which is a very fun feature that lets you explore some of the untouched areas of the Pokemon world. These games gave us so much that we never knew we really wanted, and it certainly helped it to finding itself sitting at about 14.17 million copies sold, granting it the title of the fourth top seller on the Nintendo 3DS. The third top seller on this list is yet another member of the Pokemon franchise because, as we said before, the Pokemon franchise generally destroys the sales charts in Nintendo's handheld consoles. As it was really the only major Nintendo franchise that had all of its main series games released on a handheld console. Released on November 18th, 2016 worldwide, Pokemon Sun and Moon were arguably the most hyped up and anticipated Pokemon games other than this year's for the Nintendo Switch. Pokemon was in its 20th year, and fans were expecting the grandest of games to celebrate the incredible milestone. This was also the first Pokemon game in two years at the time, making it the longest gap between Pokemon game releases since the three-year gap of Pokemon Gold and Silver and Ruby and Sapphire. And before you go commenting about it, yes, we are skipping over Crystal. We know about it, there's no need to comment. With two full years of build-up to the hyped release of Pokemon's 20th anniversary game, some would say Pokemon Sun and Moon fulfilled the hype, and others would say that it really didn't. But then again, that is of course left to the opinion of you guys, the players. 
Pokemon Sun and Moon sold incredibly well in comparison to all the other games of the franchise due to the amount of hype from both diehard and casual fans. And the Aloha region gave us a whole new tropical take on the previous regions we got. No other region other than the Hoenn region had this much of a tropical atmosphere, as the whole inspiration for this brand new region was from Hawaii. The game's story is fairly linear and bland, and suffers from the hardcore fanbase argument that Pokemon is getting too linear and easy. Sun and Moon were a bright spot for the Pokemon franchise, as both generations 5 and 6 kinda got a lot of flack from the old-style hardcore fanbase. And these hardcore fans seem to look at this game like a call to the past of sorts, with much more clever Pokemon designs and a classical feeling region. The games also had some Cantonian fan service, with references to the first region, as well as the appearance of Red and Blue at the entrance to the battle tree. Pokemon Sun and Moon hyped its way to about 16.14 million copies sold, and it finds itself on the third top seller list for the Nintendo 3DS. The runner-up on the top seller list is yet another Pokemon title, and it is in fact the last one. Pokemon X and Y was released worldwide on October 12th of 2013, and the French-inspired region has been open to a wide amount of criticism from the fanbase. Just barely edging out Pokemon Sun and Moon in sales, X and Y are the first games to suffer from the critique of a pure linearity and overall easiness found in the Pokemon games. I mean, in this game you don't even have a competitive rival, and at first it's hard to even figure out who your rival is. But one of the major positives out of this game is the secrecy of the evil team, Team Flare. This team is one of the more developed out of the series, and Lissandre's secrecy in hiding the fact that he is the head leader of Team Flare is something that all of us loved on our first playthrough. The Kalos region is also a beautiful and serene region, as it gives off that elegant feel of the nation of France and the city of Paris has throughout its history. Kalos also has a diverse array of landmarks as well, as the story of the legendary Pokémon adds a lot to the enjoyment of the gameplay as well. The motif of life and death present in the tales of the legendary Xerneas and Yvetil is one of the most complex and well-developed in the franchise, and it certainly does add tribute to the love the fanbase gives it. Pokemon X and Y sold about 16.37 million copies, just edging itself into the runner-up spot as Nintendo 3DS's second top seller. The top seller on the Nintendo 3DS shouldn't be much of a surprise to most of you guys, as it certainly wasn't to us. Highly regarded as one of the best in its series, Mario Kart 7 was released for the Nintendo 3DS on December 4th, 2011. And boy did it change up the regular Mario Kart formula. This game introduced the ability for players to customize their vehicle, as well as different tire options, and of course, who could forget the revolutionary hang gliders. These hang gliders changed the course of Mario Kart tracks over the next two installments, Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U and the deluxe version on the Nintendo Switch, as you would now be able to glide across open trackless areas. The game houses 16 playable characters, as well as 32 different tracks, 16 of which are unique to Mario Kart 7 and the other 16 are just old tracks from previous games. Lakitu, Wiggler, Honey Queen, and Metal Mario are the game's newcomers, and of course a whole bunch of old favorites return yet again. Mario Kart 7 is the perfect embodiment of a handheld Mario Kart, and it is certainly deserving of being revered as one of the series' best titles and arguably most revolutionary. Mario Kart 7 sold 18.11 million copies, and is officially crowned as Nintendo 3DS's top seller. Thanks for watching today's episode of Top Sellers. Do keep in mind that this list is literally just statistical data. It's not our opinion or ranking all of the games on the 3DS, but rather just the statistical top 5 best selling games on the console. However, do let us know what 3DS games are your favorite, and if you were shocked at any of the games being in the top seller or not being one. And while you're down there tapping away, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and check out some of our more recent videos, which we'll leave links to in the description as well as to our Patreon and Discord. Check out our Patreon where you can donate to our cause and contribute to the great videos we produce. Some benefits of becoming a Patreon member include seeing future videos a day early and having your name displayed at the end of our content. Our Discord is also open to you guys to come and chat with our staff members and each other about gaming, so don't be afraid to join. We have great discussions about gaming topics in our Discord, and it's a great way to communicate and even play with fellow gaming fanatics and viewers of our channel. 
We also have links to our merchandise stores in the description where you can purchase an array of game domain merch ranging from mouse pads to even phone cases. Be sure to stay tuned for more top sellers and other great content, and thanks for watching today's edition of Top Sellers. Hello and welcome back to Game Domain. Today we're bringing you guys our second top sellers of 2019, with this edition focusing on yet another classic Nintendo console. So far, we've covered Nintendo's GameCube, Game Boy Advance, DS, 3DS, N64, Wii, and Microsoft's Xbox 360. In this edition of Top Sellers, we're venturing way back to the depths of Nintendo's gaming history. In fact, all the way back to the very first console released by Nintendo, the Nintendo Entertainment System. Widely regarded as the NES, this Pioneer console debuted in Japan on July 15, 1983, and on October 18, 1985 in North America. The NES sold its way onto 61.91 million units worldwide, being supported by the debut of flagship franchises such as Super Mario Bros. and The Legend of Zelda, which also took up the large majority of individual game sales, as you'll see in this video. So, with that being said, let's move into the honorable mentions to start things off. Before we get into the real list, which is only the top 5 best-selling games on the system, we would like to acknowledge the games that just missed the cut in the 6 to 10 spots. Coming in at number 10 is Nintendo's Golf, which is playable on the Switch Online NES emulator service, so go check those games out. Number 9 houses Excitebike, followed by Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link at number 8. Coming in at number 7 is Dr. Mario, and finally followed by Tetris at number 6. All five of these games just barely miss the cut of being NES top sellers. Now, let's get into the real list, starting with number 5. Number 5. The Legend of Zelda, 6,510,000 copies worldwide. Making the list by a large margin, over 1 million more copies than Tetris, is none other than the original Legend of Zelda. Released on February 26, 1986, The Legend of Zelda quickly burst onto the gaming scene as one of the most popular games of its era, and that would continue straight up until today. Although the game is looked upon now as outdated due to all the 3D Zelda greatness that we have now, this game is a must-play for any Nintendo fan, and especially anybody who calls themselves a Zelda fan. We've already said so much about this game in past videos, such as our Ranking the Zelda Games video, so we don't really have too much to add about this game at this point. This game introduced us to all of the things that we love about the Legends of Zelda series, giving us everything ranging from the main protagonist Link and Princess Zelda, to the iconic Master Sword and even Link's green tunic. This 2D, pixelated, paper plate looking world known as Hyrule has evolved into one of the most detailed open maps in the history of gaming, evolving more and more and getting more detailed in each new game. This all draws back to the beautiful world and more importantly series known as The Legend of Zelda, which is arguably the most acclaimed Nintendo franchise of all time. The original game for the NES was a pioneer in the scheme of open world gaming, and it sold its way to 6,510,000 copies worldwide, making it the fifth top seller on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Number 4. Super Mario Bros. 2. 7,460,000 copies worldwide. The next game that gets to call itself an NES top seller is actually one that is not at all well received among the Nintendo community. As most popular media goes, sequels are almost always not as good as their predecessors. Of course, there are a few exceptions to this rule, like Star Wars Episode V, The Empire Strikes Back, as well as Pokemon Gold and Silver, but this rule certainly does not apply to the game that comes in here at number 4. Just about the only reason that Super Mario Bros. 2 finds itself on this list is because of the beginning of its title, being that it is, of course, the second installment in the Super Mario Bros. series. The game is not a horrible game, but it certainly is the outlier in the series' original trio, being outdone by both its predecessor and its successor. The original Super Mario Bros. broke new ground in the gaming industry, and it being such a large success swayed people into going out and purchasing the sequel game. The major reason for poor fan perception of the game over in Japan was how overly difficult the game was. Before the American release, the game engine was completely redesigned to model the interim game Yumi Kojo, Doki Doki Panic. The game has been reconfigured for many different consoles on many different emulating services, which has given future generations the ability to experience this game as well as the other two original Super Mario Bros. titles. Super Mario Bros. 2 has sold its way to 7,460,000 copies worldwide, making it the Nintendo Entertainment System's fourth top seller. Number 3. Super Mario Bros. 3. 18 million copies worldwide. 
The game coming in at the number 3 spot is the one that we ranked as our second best Super Mario Bros. game of all time. That being in our Ranking the Super Mario Bros. Christmas special that we did this past December. Super Mario Bros. 3 is the third installment of the historic Super Mario Bros. series and is certainly a major improvement on both the games that came before it. It's critically acclaimed as one of the greatest games of all time and widely regarded by many as a top 10 Nintendo game of all time. The game made enough changes to make it feel different from the previous installments, but also enough similarities to make it feel partially like the same game. This equal blend of new and old made this game one that was revered among people of the late NES gaming generation, and it was titles like this that got people's hopes up for the next generation of gaming that was coming in the form of the SNES, which was at the time still just a few short years away. Some of the new elements found in Super Mario Bros. 3 would become iconic Super Mario staples, such as the Koopalings and the world map. In this entry, you are also now able to slide down slopes, pick up special objects, and even freely climb vines. Mario can also now fly with the pairing of special power-ups known as the Super Leaf and the Tanuki Suit, which gave Mario the appearance of a raccoon and a Tanuki to go along with the flying ability. The game became so popular that it even crossed its popularity over to the media side of things, as it was even featured in a collaboration between Nintendo of America and NBC Network in the form of The Adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3, an animated television series. Super Mario Bros. 3's popularity carried its way all the way to 18 million units sold worldwide. This is enough to make Super Mario Bros. 3 the Nintendo Entertainment System's third top seller. Number 2. Duck Hunt 28,300,000 copies worldwide Coming in as the NES's second top seller is a game that isn't at all popular compared to the rest of the games on this list, but had its popularity surge over the last few years due to what we call the Smash Effect. Duck Hunt's inclusion in the last two installments of the Super Smash Bros. series. The Smash Effect is essentially just the increased popularity centered around a specific character or a game after it was introduced into the Super Smash Bros. series. This includes, but is not limited to, Duck Hunt, The Ice Climbers, Dr. Mario, Mr. Game & Watch, and Rob. All of these fighters were not very popular before their respective introductions into the Super Smash Bros. series and all got a shot of popularity for themselves and the games or series they came from. For an early Nintendo title being released in Japan in April of 1984, Duck Hunt is fairly violent. While not graphically intense violence, the idea of shooting ducks in a kid's video game was something that today is much more acceptable than it was back in the day. Duck Hunt is by far the most simplistic game that finds itself onto this list, as there is nothing else to the game other than shooting ducks. The only other thing we could say is that this game utilizes the NES Zapper accessory, which, back in the day, made the game feel as realistic as it possibly could for a game of its nature. Duck Hunt sold 28,300,000 copies worldwide, making it the Nintendo Entertainment System's second top seller. Number 1. Super Mario Bros. 40,240,000 copies worldwide. Now that we've gotten this far, the NES's top sellers shouldn't be too much of a surprise for most of you viewers out there. Just as the Pokemon series dominated the top sellers list of most of Nintendo's handheld consoles, Super Mario Bros. has done the same here on this list for the NES. And without the original, you couldn't have either Super Mario Bros. 2 or 3, so that leaves us with the original Super Mario Bros. coming in as the Nintendo Entertainment System's top seller. As with the original Legend of Zelda game, there's almost nothing else that we can say about this game that we haven't already said in previous videos. This game is a masterpiece in and of itself, and is a trailblazer, not only for 2D platforming games, not only platform RPGs, but for Nintendo as a gaming company, which essentially means gaming as a whole. This game changed the scene of gaming forever, as everything up until this day would be completely different without it. Launching what is arguably the most popular gaming franchise in history, the original Super Mario Bros. showed fans what the NES and Nintendo was truly capable of, and that they were no longer the gaming card company that they had started as in the late 1800s. The original game itself might very well be among the most popular video games of all time, and is certainly one of the most well known. Players, of course, take control of the iconic Mario, who goes on his extraordinary adventure to save Princess Peach from the evil Bowser. I mean, that pretty much sounds cliché at this point, that's how well known this storyline is. We've seen it done a dozen times in different iterations of the series, but it is still as fun and amusing now as it was back in 1985. And we'll cut ourselves off there before we get too repetitive, as we can't reiterate enough how incredible this title is. Super Mario Bros. sold its way to a whopping 40,240,000 copies worldwide, changing lives and the course of gaming history with every copy sold. And that is why Super Mario Bros. gets to crown itself as the Nintendo Entertainment System's top seller. Thanks for watching today's edition of Top Sellers. 
Make sure you stay tuned to our channel for more episodes of Top Sellers, as we will be bringing you guys more episodes over the summer. Be sure to tell us what you thought of today's edition of Top Sellers in the comments section below. But while you're commenting, please remember that this list is completely factual data and has none of our opinion in it whatsoever. This series is just us telling you guys about what games sold the best on their respective consoles, and this video was no different, with these five games being the best-selling games on the NES, whether we like them or not. While you're down there, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Check out our Patreon, where you can donate to our cause and contribute to the great videos that we produce. Some benefits of becoming a Patreon member include seeing future videos a day early, as well as having your name displayed at the end of our content. Our Discord is open to you guys to come and chat with our staff members and each other about gaming, so don't be afraid to join. We have great discussions about gaming topics in our Discord, and it's a great way to communicate and even play with fellow gaming fanatics and viewers of our channel. Stay tuned to Game Domain for more great content, and thanks for watching Top Sellers, Nintendo Entertainment System Edition. Hello, and welcome back to Game Domain. Today we are bringing you guys yet another installment of our Top Sellers series, which has become arguably the channel's most popular series over the past two years. We've covered a wide range of consoles, but there is one that was oddly left out of the mix for a long time. It then became our due diligence to immediately get the ball rolling on having this infamous console appear in this series. And that's what brings us to today's release of Top Sellers Game Boy Edition. The original Game Boy is one of gaming's most renowned handheld consoles, and there are plenty of iconic games that sold well on this system. This console alone kickstarted both the Pokemon and Kirby franchises, which are both now considered staples in the gaming world. Let's take a look at what games get to call themselves the Game Boy's top sellers. Honorable Mentions First we are going to look at the games that just missed out and came in the number 10 to 6 spots. Coming in at number 10 is Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3, which sold 5,190,000 copies. Coming in at number 9 is Pokemon Pinball, which made its way into 5,310,000 consoles worldwide. Dr. Mario sold 5,340,000 copies to find its way into the number 8 spot. Generation 2's third title, Pokemon Crystal, finds itself at the number 7 spot with 6,390,000 copies sold and is followed by Super Mario Land 2, 6 golden coins in the number 6 spot with 11,180,000 copies. Time for the real top sellers list. Number 5. Pokemon Yellow. The Pokemon anime originally aired in Japan back in 1997, just a bit over a year after the release of the original Pokemon Red and Green titles. The anime would quickly help to jolt start the upcoming Pokemon Rules the World phase that will begin about a year later when the games became popular in the States, and so Nintendo wanted to capitalize on the popularity for the anime by making another medium where its greatness could be expressed. Pokemon Red and Green versions follow the story of the main protagonist, Red, and his quest to defeat Team Rocket and become champion of the Cantonian Pokemon League at the famed Indigo Plateau. The games were a major hit in Japan, smashing the notion that many people thought of them as being a flop to be. Nintendo then decided to combine the hits of Red and Green and the Pokemon anime into one fantastic gaming conglomerate, Pokemon Yellow version. Pokemon Yellow version follows mainly the same plot as the original Kanto titles, but instead has some hidden quirks that are specific to the Pokemon anime. For instance, you start out with Pikachu as your starter Pokemon, just like Ash did. Throughout the game, you even have the ability to obtain all three Kanto starter Pokemon, just like Ash did in the anime. You also come across two specific infamous members of Team Rocket in certain locations throughout the game. Which we all know is, of course, Jesse and James. The rest of the plot is essentially the same as the original titles, so we won't get too much into that. But this game rode the popularity of its predecessors in the anime to find itself as the Game Boy's fifth top seller. Number 4 Super Mario Land. Ah. Uh... As much of a die-hard Pokemon fan as I am, it is kind of refreshing to see a different franchise appear on this handheld console's top sellers video. Nintendo's flagship franchise Mario finds one of its entries appearing on the next spot in this top sellers, as Super Mario Land is number 4. Launched back in 1989, Super Mario Land was the Mario franchise's first handheld game. 
coming just a few short years after the series' inception on the NES. Originally intended to be just a cash grab to sell the new Game Boy console, Super Mario Land quickly emerged as one of the series' most popular and memorable games. Super Mario Land improved drastically on some of the holes and missing elements that the previous Super Mario titles left, and it even had a fair amount of features that were unique to that game. Super Mario Land's immense popularity would result in many sequels and remakes as the years have gone on, such as Super Mario Land 2, The Six Golden Coins in 1992, and Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3 in 1994. The game also introduced the now infamous Princess Daisy, who has since become a recurring staple in the Super Mario series, as well as now the Super Smash Bros. series. Super Mario Land had a massive impact on not just the Super Mario gaming culture, but the Nintendo gaming culture as a whole. This game is the one that truly kickstarted Nintendo's wave of handheld popularity, as nobody can deny the impact it had on the Game Boy as a console creating the greatest line of handheld consoles in gaming history. Super Mario Land sold its way to fourth on this list, making it the Game Boy's fourth top seller. Number 3. Pokemon Gold and Silver The next game is an incredibly familiar face to game domain, as we have dissected this game's greatness in more than a few videos over the years. Pokemon Red and Blue launched one of the greatest gaming series in history, and nobody ever truly thought that the pure amazement of those games could ever be repeated. But now, it is safe to say that that amazement has been repeated more than a few times, but none quite as strong as what Generation 2's Gold and Silver were able to do. Originally supposed to be the Pokemon franchise's final games, Game Freak developers went all in to make Pokemon Gold and Silver the greatest games they possibly could. At this point, there was no vision for a continuation of the series after the release of Generation 2, right at the height of when Pokemon ruled the world. Due to the mass popularity of the original games all over the world, Game Freak and Nintendo would essentially score a fiscal victory no matter how good the game they put out on the shelves. Gold and Silver gave us a brand new region, as well as the ability to go back and explore Kanto yet again. The reason that Kanto was even included was because this was meant to be the last game in the series, and we all know that didn't hold up for very long. These games have been praised greatly by the gaming community for all these years, and we have covered these games so much that we have essentially ran out of new praise to give. Gold and Silver are among gaming's greatest sequels, and they ended their reign of gaming dominance as the third top seller on the Nintendo Game Boy. Number 2. Pokemon Red, Blue, and green. This entry of top sellers has fallen into the same boat as most of the handheld episodes, being that they are dominated by Pokemon games. And as much as we love Pokemon, this console was no different. The original Pokemon games were a massive hit all over the world, and they truly began their era of dominance when they reached the States. These games pioneered the Pokemon franchise as a whole, and also helped to have a major impact on Nintendo's handheld console line for years to come. Many people grew skeptical of buying handheld consoles, as they thought a home console was much superior in every way. One of the reasons for this was the lack of new and unique franchises to handheld, and Pokemon changed that forever. It was not until 2018 that Pokemon would release a main series game on a home console, as Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee were the first of their kind. Now, it seems like Pokemon is heading down a bright future following the release of Pokemon Sword and Shield, as the power of the Switch gives them a massive array of new ideas. The original Pokemon titles are just another example of games that we have talked so much about over the years, and we really feel no need to keep repeating ourselves on how good these games are and the eternal impact they had on the world of gaming. If you want to hear us talk more in depth about these titles, then check out the following videos on our channel. Our Pokemon Red and Blue Review, Evolution of Pokemon Documentary, and Ranking the Pokemon Games. Now let's see which game takes home the trophy of being the Nintendo Game Boy's top seller. Number 1. Tetris Now some of you may be delighted at the fact that a Pokemon game does not take the top spot for this Nintendo handhelds console, as so far we have seen anything but that on the handhelds we've looked into. The game that takes the title of the Game Boy's top seller isn't really even from a major Nintendo franchise, nor is it really considered a Nintendo game at all. 
Nintendo's consoles are famous for having the majority of compatible games on the consoles be Nintendo exclusives, but this time doesn't quite fit that role 100%. Tetris caused a storm in the gaming world when it was released back in the late 1980s, and gamers couldn't get enough of this super enticing puzzle game developed by Nintendo's R&D 1 division of developers. Tetris made the minds of young kids really work hard, and in a rather fun way. It was a great way to let kids of that generation enjoy educational gaming, gaming that stimulated their mind to actually think and make rational decisions to influence the outcome of their game. Tetris found its way to 35 million sales worldwide and will always be known as the greatest puzzle game in the history of the world. And so with that, Tetris is the Nintendo Game Boy's number one top seller. What did you guys think of today's top sellers? Were there any games on there that surprised you? Tell us what you thought in the comment section down below. While you're down there, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with a friend. And don't forget to check out some of our more recent videos, which we will leave links in the description for, as well as our Patreon and Discord. Check out our Patreon, where you can donate to our cause and contribute to the great videos we produce. Some benefits of becoming a Patreon member include seeing future videos a day early, as well as having your name displayed at the end of our content. Our Discord is open to you guys to come and chat with our staff members and each other about gaming, so don't be afraid to join. Down in the description, we also have links to our merchandise stores, as there you can purchase an array of game domain merch ranging from mouse pads to even phone cases. Stay tuned to the channel for more great content, and thanks for watching today's episode of Top Sellers.